fact, our 21st wedding anniversary was coming up June 1st. And um, I just didn't see us being together at that point. That's how, um, how down I was. Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your man's conscious effort so that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about the three-step cure if your husband would rather drink too much than be with you. My guest, Jessica, was living with a scary level of hostility and violence in her marriage, but she found there was something she could do about it. And she did it. Today, she feels loved, cherished, and adored. And her marriage is free from domestic violence. She's married to the same man. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. But first, here's the three-step cure if your husband would rather drink too much than be with you. When you see your husband drinking too much, it's very scary because you can't help but wonder, is this an addiction? Is he an alcoholic? because everybody knows that that can come with a lifetime of suffering if he is an alcoholic. Even if you're not worried about that though, just seeing him choose to get wasted instead of wanting to be with you hurts a lot. I remember how confused and hurt I was when I realized my husband would rather do a lot of things that seemed like a waste than spend time with me. I felt so unlovable and so undesired And I really, really wanted to feel loved and desired. So that was painful. But there's a cure. And these are the three steps that I used and that I've seen work for thousands of women. You can experiment and see if they work for you too. Step one, restore respect. I had no idea that I was so disrespectful early on in my marriage, but looking back, I was the worst. I made what I thought were helpful comments and suggestions about his driving, his clothes, his snacks, his career, his paycheck, and his family, never thinking that I was hurting my big, strong man, but I was. I was telling him he was incompetent at pretty much everything, and that is the definition of disrespect. So I can only imagine how painful that was. And you know what kills pain? drinking. Was I influencing him to drink more by being disrespectful? Well, who knows? I bet I wasn't making him drink less though. When I first learned how to restore respect by apologizing for being disrespectful, I wasn't very excited about it. It seemed unfair that I would take all the blame for our problems just like that when he was the one who needed to improve. But now I'm so grateful that I know how to be respectful, to be a kinder, softer version of myself and not that dirty, hairy woman always chipping away at my husband's self-worth. Now I see what a great guy he is and how smart and competent. Funny thing too, now that I'm much more respectful, my husband doesn't drink at all. Did I influence him to stop drinking? Not on purpose, but I bet he doesn't feel as much pain as he used to when he was living with disrespectful me. Step number two, be fun. Drinking is fun. At least I think so. I like to feel buzzed now and then. And when my husband and I fell in love, we had a lot of fun together. Lots of it was sober and some not so sober. And I think he thought that was what we were going to keep doing after we got married too, is have a lot of fun. But I stopped being fun and I started being pretty serious and overworked and cranky after we got married, like bait and switch. And he missed me being fun. He missed having fun with me. And it's not like he could go out and have fun with someone else every night. I mean, not without making me even more cranky and upset, but drinking is one way to have a little fun when you're holed up with a cranky wife and your options for fun are limited. And everybody needs a little fun, right? So when I started to remember who I was and how much I like to have a good time and laugh and play and sing and dance, we both got to have a lot more fun. And that's such an important part of a good marriage, right? And a good life, having fun. So one question to ask yourself when your husband would rather drink too much than be with you is, 
could you be more fun? Because being fun is attractive. And I don't mean I'm a, a laugh a minute entertainer. I just mean I'm pleasable. I'll laugh at his jokes or I'll chat about the news or I'll race him to the mail. Step number three, appreciate what he does right. So let's say instead of drinking too much and avoiding you, you wanted your husband to cuddle with you on the couch or dream about the future together or take you on a date. One way to be magnetic is to think of all the things you appreciate about your husband and share your gratitude with him. You could tell him how much you appreciate what a good listener he is and how hard he works to make you happy or, or what a great job he did grilling dinner. You might wonder, well, what does thanking him have to do with him drinking too much and avoiding you? Everybody is interested in hearing what a good job they did. Genuine and heartfelt acknowledgments are magnetic. So if you haven't been doing that recently, well, he may be suspicious at first when you start, but that's okay. You could tell him that you've decided to focus on being grateful more and that you want to develop that as a habit by giving him three gratitudes a day. Can you really make your husband stop drinking too much and want to be with you by being respectful and having more fun and focusing on what you're grateful for? Who knows? You're the expert on your life and only you know what will work for you. I only have my experience to share. But if you're feeling lonely or sad about how much he's drinking when he could be with you, what could it hurt to experiment with these ideas and see what happens? I have exciting news for you because right now you can listen to my book, The Empowered Wife, for free with your Audible membership in the United States. So discover the six surprising secrets to attract your man's time, his attention, his affection when you listen to The Empowered Wife audiobook on Audible without using credits. You don't need any credits. It's free. The Empowered Wife has over 1,700 five-star reviews, and it also has some one-star reviews too, because not everybody is ready to hear what they can do to fix their relationship without their man even knowing about it. And I get it. I wasn't ready either until my marriage was completely falling apart and we were on the brink of divorce. And then I learned from women with happy marriages what actually works. And now my marriage is shiny and amazing. And those secrets are in this book. And you can listen to the whole book for free with your Audible membership. The only catch is that this Audible deal is only for a limited time. So to make your marriage last and thrive, go and listen for free with your Audible membership right now. My guest Jessica was living with a scary level of hostility and violence in her marriage, but she found there was something she could do about it and she did it. Today she feels loved, cherished and adored and her marriage is free from domestic violence. She's married to the same man. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. Jessica, welcome to the Empowered Wife podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you. All right. Well, we want to go back to the battle days. What was going on in your marriage? Oh, well, um, it was the about May 2022 that um, I was at a very low point in my marriage and I was barely, barely able to crawl. Um, I had high blood pressure. I had, um, hives and I just, um, I was just looking for a, a reason to stay married. Um, I had for, for many years I had struggled, um, with, just feeling like I was verbally and emotionally abused. Um, and then uh, it was that May that I took a three day trip down to Wichita mountains um, and took, took a three day just for myself to, you know, kind of put it right before the Lord. I brought my, wedding pictures. I brought my wedding vows. You know, I have a suitcase full of marriage books too, you know, with, and, and I just said, what do you want me to do? 
what do you want me to do? Do you want me to separate or divorce? Our 21st wedding anniversary was coming up June 1st. And um, I just didn't see us being together at that point. That's how um, how down I was. And um, it was the third day that it just seemed to happen out of the blue. But um, a friend of mine from Idaho texted and said, you know, is your oldest son's middle name D for Dawson? Because he was at Air National Guard boot camp and her, her daughter wanted to write him. And I said, you know, yeah, it is. D is for Dawson. And it sent me back in time to a time when I was a teenager and I was <clears throat> listening to counseling on the radio by this man named Dawson McAllister. And he, he coached um, teens who were troubled all across America. It was the early 90s. And... Um, and so I, I thought, I wonder if that ministry is still in existence. So I, you know, looked it up and sure enough, it's, you know, the hope line. So I, I got on the chat line and I just told my hope coach, whose name was Lyric, uh, who I didn't know, you know, from Adam, um, what my troubles were. And I said, you know, would you pray for me? And she said, I just finished a, a really good book. It's called The Empowered Wife. And I think it would really help you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, did you hear anything I just said? Uh, you know, and, and I said, oh, okay. And she she said it a second time. And, uh, and so I got off of that. I had never heard of Laura Doyle. I had never heard of The Empowered Wife. And... Um, so I, I got right on there. I got, I started Googling who is Laura Doyle? What, what is she about? You know, what does she stand for? Could, you know, could the, could she help me? Uh, what, you know, what is this? You know, I, I just didn't know anything. And so I, I started reading articles and especially ones about, um, you know, abuse. And then I thought, you know, um, there's a podcast. Wow. Okay. So I got on the podcast. I listened to two podcasts and I thought for, for the first time. And I mean, in my whole marriage, I, I started to have a little glimmer of hope start to form in my heart. I thought, you know, okay, I'm going to look more into this. And, um, that was the third day of my retreat. And it was time for me to go back home. And I was dreading going back home. And even on the drive home, I was thinking, you know, I'm going to pull over and go to a library and just, you know, stay there for a few hours. But I didn't. I pushed through and I listened to The Surrendered Wife on Audible all the way home. And um, when I got home, my husband pulled in right after me. It was the evening. And, um, and I started practicing a cheat phrase. And, and I started practicing gratitude. And um, uh, his first question was, are you going to this event our children are in? I said, I had no idea about that event. Um, yes, I'll go. And, um, and so I, you know, and I was just, I tried to show up uh, smiling and light, but I was, I still had fresh tears running down my cheeks when I got home. But um, I went to that event and then for the next two weeks, I would say I started practicing some, some cheat phrases like, um, I hear you, I would listen. I, and I started expressing gratitude, you know, thank you so much for telling me about that award ceremony, um, for inviting me, you know, uh, whatever it was I could think of, I started practicing gratitude and I started listening and duct taping. And then, um, I saw immediate results. I, my husband just, um, he seemed to just kind of, you know, respond positively and it just fueled my desire to get to know the skills more so then i was like um 
you know, listening to the podcast all the time, uh, just really trying to be, I, I was so encouraged by the, the stories on there. And I thought, you know, um, for the first time, I have hope <clears throat> that I, I'm not just going to have to survive this marriage, but that this marriage could be, you know, it could be easy and it could be fun and it could be loving and supportive, you know, and, and I started, you know, really diving deep. So then it was like a few months later that I was pretty confident in my skills. Um, then something happened with my 15 year old between my 15 year old son and my husband. And it was like all my, you know, for the, the, the whole year of 2022, it was, um, it started out very, the tensions were very high, uh, there. And for the first time I started seeing physical aggression between my oldest children uh, who were at the time 17, 16, and 15. And it was like, um, it was like a push, uh, a, a punch, a missed punch. It was like, um, mm. you know, yelling, extreme fury, you know, and my children were in tears. And, and I just felt so helpless because I was just trying to survive myself. Um, then when I had the skills, I was not just surviving, I was thriving. And um, and then when that happened between my 15 year old and my husband, I said, this is my chance. I'm going to, I'm going to act because I know our marriage can get through whatever. Our home is safe. It was, it was not like I felt like I had to evacuate and, you know, find yeah. a safe place. It was just these like, it was not even, it was maybe a one-time occurrence with each child, you know? And then, um, but with this one, I was just fearful that this was going to continue to my younger children. And um, so then I I really fretted over this and I really sought counsel about the decision I wanted to make. I had to come to a decision whether to call DHS or not. So, yeah. You're going to, so you're, I, you're contemplating bringing authorities in to, to help yeah. resolve this, this scary, right. scary situation. Right. Yeah. Because I was, I was still, you know, um, new to the skills. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and I also um, was hoping to achieve the the result that these anger outbursts would stop yes. you know, toward the yes children. yeah it's I not mean, i mean i just can't drive if there's still your kids you feel like your kids are in danger or yeah this kind of violence is going right on. sure right. right and then when i would bring it up i would be told that it's not a thing you know and and i thought you know I, I just don't know what to think. I mean, I, I can't talk about it with my husband. I can't. And so I didn't, I just bypassed him in this decision. I, I just went straight to DHS. I bypassed him because I was afraid, you know, afraid. Well, just afraid. <laughs> I was, I was operating out of fear and, um, but also out of love for my children um and for you know the hope of better days and you know and it's it sounds very foreign to people uh why would you do that you you know your your home must be a safe place if you're still there why would you why would you call the dhs and what i i was thinking is that you know i don't know what the outcome of this will be but i trust that god is over the government and he's not going to take our children away. I'm going to trust that, you know, that even our marriage will be stronger because of this. And I'm going to trust that our children will, will know that, that, you know, they deserve better treatment, you know? 
And and so it was it was a very difficult decision for me oh, to yeah. make. Oh, I was yeah. counseled, you know, all all different ways. And it just came down to me and my personal conviction. So then um I did share that information with my husband. And of course, you know, it was it was like a, he felt betrayed. Uh, he felt he, he felt very angry. Uh, he was very angry. And I said, you know, we're just ordinary people. Everyone, it, it's not just those weirdos out there, you know, that that like beat their children to a pulp. We're just we're just ordinary people who get you know we we deal with anger and. And um, and I know that I've learned some things that will, you know, help us through this. But I believe that our marriage will come out stronger in the end. You said that to him. I did, and and I, you know, and um, and I, and then he said, "Well, you know, I'm going to report. You know, I'm not going to let them in. I'm going to report you because you know you spank the children and." And, you know, I said, um, you know, I just trust that you'll do the wisest thing. And, and, um, you weren't scared. No, I wasn't, I wasn't scared about that. And, and then the, the DHS opened the case and closed the case in three months. Um, they did interview everyone and, um, and then they just said, you know, there's not enough evidence, you know, for, for this case. And I guess they have more severe cases to attend to. Um, in that time, I worked through, um, I, 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 I jumped on the need for support that, that your community ridiculously happy wives offers and listening to the podcast, I knew about it. And I thought I will not survive this if I don't have support. And I learned from experience that I couldn't go to people around me. I couldn't go to um, Christian groups. I I had to go to a place where I was safe to talk about these things and, and not just talk about them, but seek to seek to have the best outlook and seek to have solutions. Um, and seek to love my husband and see the best in him. And, and that's what this community did for me. It helped me to grow so much where um, I even learned what empathy was because I didn't know what that was. I, you know, I thought it was um, pitying a person or like emotionally draining myself on that person's behalf, but it's not. And, and I learned, you know, it's just, listening to someone and and relating to them and saying you know that sounds so hard that sounds so painful mm -hmm. and um i had <clears throat> i had so much stuff from my past that was like an obstacle for me to move forward and instead of focusing on my past it's so amazing that focusing on the present and the future helps me to heal from my past you know wow. And um, I mean, it was just amazing where I actually uh, recently, it was a, like a few months ago that I went to my husband. And I apologized for calling DHS. And I, and I said, you know, you must have felt betrayed because I would, I would feel betrayed and, and you must have felt so, um, so hurt. And so like you, like I wanted you out of the picture you know, and, and I just said, I apologize for being disrespectful by calling DHS, you know, and, and I just, and I should have come to you and I should have talked to you first. And, um, and, uh, and then he said, what I did was unacceptable. And, um, and then we moved on from there. Um, Oof. Oof. yeah. Oh, wait, so and, you, I mean, this is very humble and courageous for you to apologize to him. 
for calling DHS. And his response was, that was not acceptable. I mean, that's not the response. I mean, it kind of sucks when you think I'm practicing the skills here, I'm doing this really good. And then you get a response like that, where he, it, he was not, it didn't rest restore peace immediately. It sounds like it, it caused him to go back to that time and relive his anger, which is the scariest thing, isn't it? Yeah. It is, but um, it's it's so amazing that with the community, that support, um, that I just have, that I think that was exactly what I needed. I what I've been looking for, um, all my marriage, and um, and it was, it was not just that it was. I had, I knew what I had, what it took to get through anything. And I went through lots of cold wars. I mean, not on my part, but lot, lots of silent treatment. Um, you know, how do I get past that? Uh, I, I dug my heels deep into the community and into the skills. Um, I have really good friends, you know, scattered across the U.S. Um, that I would call to you and I, I would just, you know, talk to you on Marco Polo, just tell, you know, updates and uh, ask for prayer. Um, I just really dug deep into the podcast, into the, you know, just whatever I could. I was a student, student of Laura Doyle. Okay. And, um, and I thought, you know, um, I, you know, I just realized so many, I had epiphanies about myself in this one and a half year journey. It was um, that I don't love very much. My love is very little. And I, I, I thought I was the most loving person, but, it, you know, being part of the community, it was like, <laughs> I realized that I don't love very much. My husband, you know, I even most recently I've been reflecting on this. My husband loves me so much. I think there's not anybody on this earth who loves me as much as he does. And one of the evidence I have for that is we went to a Sunday school social and we were just asked, you know, random questions. And um, he was asked, what's your most prized possession? And uh, he, he answered, my wife. And, and every, there were some like, oh, you know, he's saying she's a possession, like she's that <laughs> thing. You know, I could hear it around the room. And I just gracefully grace received. Um, I learned how to receive and I just smiled and lit up and I drew closer to him and I said, thank you. And I looked, I looked up into his face. I said, I said, thank you. And I, I look back on that from time to time because sometimes I need to call on the evidence. Um, as far as how things are, you know, now there's, I, I look at the good that my yes. husband done because we still have rocky times. I mean, our, my journey has just begun. My work has just begun. Um, but, and yeah, and, he prizes you above all else is what you heard when he said that it okay. wasn't that you were a possession. You, you didn't hone in on that part. You but he prizes you above all else. Yeah. And you're, and I hear your journey's just beginning a year and a half in, but it's a, it sounds, it sounds like an exciting journey. It is. And, you know, I, I actually was thinking about, uh, before I even met my husband, I had prayed that the Lord would bless me with a husband and a marriage that would draw me close to him that would make me more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And he did. He gave me a husband who, it you know, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be here on this podcast today. And I would be still operating out of fear, which was my operandi, my, you know, my, my modus operandi for all my life. I operated out of fear and I didn't even know it. And um, 
And now I'm changing things. It's like I'm turning turning things around in my home where we're operating out of love. And it is the most freeing thing when, you know, I could be experiencing something, no, nothing short of a verbal thrashing and I can still operate out of love, you know, I can deep listen for what my husband's heart message is. Wow. Um, and I still have hope. I still have hope. And I'm like, now is so much better than a year and a half ago. And it's only going to get better because my husband mirrors me, you know, this operating out of love, this gratitude, just the other day, <laughs> it was, we had a rough Friday discussion where I showed my tender side. I said, I can't do this. And he says, yes, you can. You just need to cut these other things out. And I, and I just said, no, I can't and stuck with it. And then I, I talked about gratitude and I was expressing some gratitude. And he said, you know, that makes me feel so condescended upon because you are just making things up because you don't have anything else to say. And I said, I, I see these gratitudes for me because it's my work. I want to make sure my heart is right toward you. And, um, and he said, oh, I didn't know that. I thought you were doing it for me. And then uh, I said, no, I, you know, I, I have to work at this. I, I want to see you in the best light. I want to think of you in the best way. And, uh, and then Sunday, he started the day with three gratitudes that he had been working on. <laughs> But thank you for cleaning the room. Thank you for making dinner. Thank you for helping the children with their chores. I really appreciate you. And I thank you for this. And then, you know, so he, I know that, it, you know, it is getting better. It's getting easier. And there's so much evidence for it. Um, he does so much for us. And he really wants to be a safe person place for our family. I really grabbed on to um, spouse fulfilling prophecies, you know, just saying what I believed my husband would be. And there's days that I, I call him sweetheart and he would say, don't call me that. So the mischievous part of me thinks of some other things I could call him, but I stuck with sweetheart and I said, you know, that's the way I see you. You call him prickly heart, maybe, but yeah, <laughs> but you're choosing sweetheart. I love this. Okay. So you, okay, sorry, I interrupted. Keep, keep going. Yeah. And so, um, and, and there's, you know, there's just so much evidence, you know, just so many things to be thankful for, like his tightening the faucet on the shower that gets loose and, and he rushed home from work yesterday so I could go to my dance class in the evening. And it's like, there's so many things for me to pounce on to just say, I just love that. Thank you so much. That makes me feel so loved, you know, so taken care of. And, you know, he's a he's a very masculine man. I mean, he is, we are worlds apart and I still don't understand him. And he'll never understand me. <laughs> and... Yet he, he and I, I, I have so much faith that we are going to have a strong, intimate friendship one day. And, you know, it's just like getting past all the junk of the past. I was able to just, um, just focus on learning about him. Like I'm, I'm learning about who he is for the first time. And we've been, we're, we'll be married for 22 years. You know, um, yeah, it's it's amazing. It is amazing. It sounds like it almost you almost sound like a newlywed in a way. You know, I know you're not. You have lots of children together, and you've been married a long time. But I just kind of hear you saying, "I'm excited to spend the rest of my life with this man." Yes, there yeah. was a day. <laughs> There was a day I was at the thrift store and I saw a sign that said, uh, retirement, half the pay, twice the husband. And I nearly fell out. I mean, I was so full of fear. <laughs> I 
And that was a big warning sign to me. You know, things have got to change. Things cannot continue this way because when the children leave, I'm I'm scared to death to be alone with this man. <laughs> and now, you know, my husband talks about, you know, just the two of us going on a cruise together. Um, he he talks about he kind of kind of plays with it and dabbles with it because he's still very much hurt and he's still on a, a, a healing journey himself. He does not have the skills. Um, as for me, I just wanted to revisit the beginning. Um, before that aggression started happening, it was like um, some healing in me started taking place. It was so interesting. It was like um, emotionally, because my perspectacles were changing toward my husband, expressing gratitude, showing respect. It was like I was starting to see him instead of um, this controlling monster dictator um heartless being i started to see him as like my hero like this you know amazing man and um <laughs> it was and then i started emotionally healing it was so strange because uh then it started some other things up that needed healing because we had been separated uh, he was in the guest bedroom and I was in the bedroom uh, for three, over three years. I kicked him out. Um, and, and then with that emotional healing, uh, this was before I had invited him back in. Uh, this was pre-skills because I thought, you know, I, I kicked him out because I was afraid. I did it out of fear. It's that fear coming back, you know, that fear that's dictating my life. And I invited him and of course, nothing was happening. It was like, he was as far from me as I was from him. On if We could have fallen off the bed. We were so <laughs> far away from each other. <laughs> but um, after the skills and with that emotional healing, one day I had this very just odd thought that I wanted to have sex with my husband. It was the oddest thing. <laughs> Strange. And, yeah. Because um, I hadn't had any feeling like that for years. And I, I confided in a friend about it. And I said, the, you know, the strangest thing happened. I, I was going to bed and I had to fight this, you know, just be intimate with my husband. And I haven't had that kind of thought in years. And, and, I, and I've been repulsed by him, you know, and, and I, I didn't even want him to touch me before, you know? And she says, Jessica, God has healed you. <laughs> I said, you're right. Okay, so then about a week later, I had that irresistible, and it was almost like I had um, an orgasm. And I hadn't had one of those in years. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> And then, you know, I was like, well, I can't because I don't want to get pregnant. And uh, he's going to have to have a surgery before. And, and then it was that fear that was starting to come back in. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to kick this fear out the window. I, I'm done with that. You know, I'm just going to, you know, trust that God knows what's best for us. <laughs> and he knows our hearts. Um, and I just got in, I slid into bed and I just put my hand on his arm and it was like, not, not a moment had, you know, gone by since our last time of intimacy. And it was, it was so sweet. And since then it was like, it changed things. And, you know, just to, to show a little bit about my husband, He's so committed. Not once during all these years had he ever mentioned divorce. He was always, um, he showed a level of trust in me um, and respect because after I had slid in that, that night and initiated, I, I, I just, I let him, you know, 
kind of take over after I put my hand on him. But, yeah. but it was wordless. It was wordless. But he later confided in me, in me that he thought I was pregnant. And, you know, but he, you know, he, he thought that's the reason she's trying to cover up something, you know, but he had never asked me or accused me of having, uh, you know, being in an affair. And that shows a level of respect. And, um, and of course he had no, nothing to base those fears on, you know, but that's really what <laughs> His, his conclusion was, but I told him I had to set the record straight. And I said, no, that is not, that is, that has nothing to do. Uh, I, that's not even me. You know, I, I said, I just have changed. My whole way of thinking toward you has changed. And I realized what a wonderful man you are you know, and, and that makes me just want to draw closer to you. And he doesn't know what to think of all this stuff, all the, all these changes. I mean, <laughs> he just, he really, he didn't know what I was doing, except he knew money was being, you know, drawn out of <laughs> the account, but he did not question me. Um, Cause I think he was seeing so many good things that he couldn't really understand, but he was going with it. He was going with it. And he's like, like I said, he's still in his own healing journey from years of my, my efforts to make things better, which backfired on me and years of disrespect. There's a lot of, um, a lot of recovery ahead of us. And, um, I just, I'm, I'm here to stay. I was on the fence, even during, during ridiculously happy wives, I would be on the fence, off the fence on, you know, but you know, I, I keep that vision at my forefront. And also I know that there's no, you know, no pain. Um, all pain has a purpose. All suffering has a purpose. And I didn't experience my 20 something years of marriage with pain for nothing. No. And, you know, God's word says to stand up for the oppressed, to speak for those who don't have a voice. And that's the way I had felt so, so long for so long. And, um, and I just want to impart skills to other women um, who I, I know these skills are so necessary and valuable. It's, you know, God, God's word says, you know, so much about everything that the skills say, but it's like the cliff notes, you know, on, on the design for marriage. And, um, and I just think it's just like, uh, I went into marriage as a good parent. I had so many good parenting skills before I was married. I was ready to be a parent uh, with all my training from, uh, Bible teachers and all this other stuff and radio programs and and um but I was not prepared to be a wife. I had no skills for that. And I just think, you know, as a former nurse, I was um I I had skills before I took care of those people. But you know, we need the same thing for marriage. We need skills before we go into marriage, not premarital counseling. You know, it doesn't even touch the surface of things. It's, it's skills. And, and especially if it hasn't been modeled for a woman, we're going to be in the dark. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. And, you know, the Bible says older women teach the younger women how to love your wives. I mean, your husbands, your children to be a good uh, caretaker of your home. And, and, you know, that's our job. Our job is to teach how, not just to tell them what, but to, to say, to show them how, to teach them how, to show what it looks like when, uh, when your husband's raging, when he's angry, when he's, you know, uh, when your children are doing the same thing, treating each other that way, when, you know, I mean, it's like, I just, I have, I have, turn so many things around in our home 
that the tone of our home is so different. And we've had times that it's just peaceful and we've had laughter and I want more of that. We, you know, we have joyful times, we have loving times and supportive times. And, and I just hang on to those. And, um, yeah, I'm just, uh, this is the best family I've ever had, Laura. I mean, I, I used to just think, you know, gosh, our family is the worst, you know, uh, this is not, this is not what I signed up for. I'm, I'm losing everything, all my work, you know, it's like my husband and I are fighting against each other and, and we're not even, uh, agreeing in how to parent. And, and it was just a big mess, but now it's, it's like, it's still a work in progress, but I love my family. I, I, I don't want to leave. I don't take these three day retreats every season or two week road trips by myself anymore. It's like, I want to be home. There's no place I'd rather be, you know? <laughs> wow. Amazing. So, so do, what do you think as far as, I mean, do you, I, I, I'm so moved by what you said about the older women are supposed to teach the younger women how to parent, how to be wives. Uh, yeah, it makes me cry for some reason because it's it's such a beautiful system, right? That this that we are um, meant to stand for each other uh, in that that your your husband is going to rage, right? That that's not that's not something that's exceptional uh, that's only happening to you. This is this is something that goes on in marriage sometimes, right? That can happen. What is your what is your outlook for? I mean, you were at a point of calling uh, for outside help for domestic violence. Um, what's your outlook for that for your family now? Well, now it's, um, I have a more unsettled inside. Uh, just recently, my now 19 year old uh, came to me and he said, um, and just to let you know, my, my 19 year old is, pretty headstrong <laughs> and uh, he has very ideal ideas along the ideas of, you know, like um, just, you know, some, some programs that he's listened to since he was a child of what a family looks like, you know, what, how a family functions, what a parent says and how a parent acts very ideal. That's where my, and he's a lot like me. In that regard, he came to me and he said, Mom, how are you still married to him? Mm. He's such a, he's such a, um, uh, a, it's stressful. It's stressful and it's hard, you know, and, and, and I said, um, and he even said, hey, how did that DHS case go? You know, I should we call DHS, you know? And and I said, well, okay, let me, you know, first, let me answer. I am not going to divorce your father. I made a a vow to to love him and to stay with him until I die. <laughs> and that hasn't happened yet. And, um, and I, I want, I want to see the best in your father. You, you really do have a great father. You just don't realize that he is, he is so engaged. He's like over the top engaged, like a coach, like a sports coach, you know, how that sports coach, uh, someone doesn't do something right. And they, they put a hole in the wall, you know, I mean, they get so crazy angry that things aren't going the way they should and that masculine energy you know like uh just i don't understand it but it's you know that's that's your father he and i used to think of him as controlling uh, sometimes i still go to that when my mind goes there but but he really is engaged he's the opposite of what i grew up with my father was passive he 
he was so passive. He didn't care what we did. He didn't, he didn't want to know. He didn't, he didn't engage with us at all. He never touched us. He never really talked to us. He was just there in the house. And so that's what I grew up with. He never yelled at us. He never laid a hand on us. And here's my husband and he's in everyone's business for some reason. <laughs> But, you know, he's he is super engaged and he loves, he has the strongest love for our children and for me. And I told him, you know, um, before we go to DHS, you know, which I mean, if you feel like you have to do that, you know, um, let's let's talk to him first. You, me, him. And um, just see what he says. Um, and then we could go to the camp, the pastor at our church, just, you know, see if he has anything. And I said, just let me know when you're ready to do that. And he said, okay, I'll, I'll let you know. Well, he, he hasn't let me know <laughs> since then. But um, I, I have brought it up. So, hey, do you want to talk, sit down with your dad? And he's like, I'll let you know. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm here, you know. Um, and I, I even went through, you know, if your father wants to divorce me, I would say, you know, something like along the lines of, well, I'm not going to stand in your way and I'm not going to help. And, and I'm, I would, I really would like to stay married. And then, you know, if, if he wanted to pursue things that would be on, you know, what his, he's going to do. Right. But my focus is just learning about this man and loving him, you know, throughout whatever, <laughs> throughout whatever. And, um, and I have so much peace and so much joy and hope. And just I'm able to love uh, my husband for the first time. And this is, this is the most amazing thing to me. This is the, the price the price that I could never pay the, the pearl. This is such a gift to me just to have this kind of view toward my husband, to, to be able to love him through the, the nasty, icky, uncomfortable, dark times. And um, I just, I have so much faith that it's going to become less and less. And I'm just reaching for, because I, I see marriage, our marriage, so differently than my husband. <laughs> I, he sees it in this dire kind of like, our marriage isn't doing so good. And I see it as, oh, you don't know the half of it. Our marriage is doing amazing and it's only going to get better. Um, so it's all about perspective. It really is. Oh, gosh. This sounds <laughs> it sounds so courageous. I really hear you just making a decision. I'm going to love this man. Like there there's lots of potential distractions. You could find lots of reasons or evidence that you shouldn't uh you know, your 19-year-old son is confronting you. Mom, why are you staying married to dad? You know, like he's the bad guy. Um and and I just hear you coming back so strongly with so much commitment, like, actually, no, he's really engaged in your like. He's a really engaged father. Reminds me of this poem that um, I was really moved by. It's at the end of the movie, Smoke Signals. And I'm going to butcher the poem, and I don't remember who wrote it, but I remember just sobbing through it because he's, they said, um, it was, how shall we forgive our fathers? Should we forgive them for uh, for working too much or never working at all? Should we forgive them for... Uh, being too engaged in our lives or or for never never being engaged at all for for uh for raising their voices or or never never raising you know never saying a word and you give the example of your your father being um distant it sounds like and then your husband being so so engaged that it's um it's almost an affront how engaged he is and yet you're you choose to forgive your husband for being too engaged um, instead of forgiving him for not being engaged enough. So you're really showing us all that it's, it's all up to you to decide how you want to view 
your husband to focus on his good qualities, to use the perspectacles, uh, to be able to celebrate him and appreciate him as the man that you prayed for that would draw you closer to God. Yeah. He's definitely that man. Yes. He's just what I needed. And, and, uh, now, people, uh, you know, I sometimes even get scared when it comes to, I, I certainly was scared in the beginning when I first started doing this work about domestic violence, right? I was so scared. I, I thought that women should leave. And I said so, and I regret that now because I meet women like you who, who teach me otherwise. But what about people who say, well, this is dangerous. This is really dangerous for for you, for your children, Punches are being thrown. What's your answer to that? Um, I would say that it doesn't happen anymore, really. It's very rare. And something that helps me to kind of get perspective is um, I watched the movie Footloose. Um. I, I really like dancing. So <laughs> I had never watched the movie or maybe I had, but just forgot. And I revisited it. And there was a scene where this pastor father slaps his daughter almost where she's like flown across the room. And he's like, I've never hit anyone in my life. And yet he did it to his daughter with his wife present to witness and he asked his wife, um, you don't believe in me anymore, do you? And she said, I never stopped believing in you. And it was, it's like one of those things where we don't want to live in um, secrecy, like we have something to hide when bad things happen, you know, when when danger starts rising up, but then we also have to keep in perspective that we're human, we're mere mortal people, and we all mess up. You know, I mean, we are all, um, we all have that propensity to be cruel. We do just as much as we do kind to be kind. I mean, I know it in myself. Uh, sometimes I lose my temper with my kids. Sometimes I lose my temper with my my husband. <laughs> but we're they're the ones that I love the most in this world. And you know, and then that's the great thing about being able to apologize, you know, to ask for forgiveness and say, you know, I really messed up. Would you forgive me? And you know, and and we all need that, you know, we all need to be able to receive it and extend it. And um, so I don't see my husband as that bad old monster anymore. You know, I mean, I really see him just as a, a human mortal man who really is trying his darndest and trying to figure things out. And um, I can't help him. It's something he has to figure out on his own. And, um, you know, <laughs> I'm just doing what I need to do. And yeah, so. You're just on your paper. You're just in your corner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's, a, you know, I, I, I've never been in my corner, Laura, until now. I've never been. You know, it's always I needed someone else to tell me that I was worth it. And if they didn't, I thought very lowly of myself. But now I'm in my own corner. And um, I can look myself square in the eyes in the mirror and say, girl, you are something. Yeah. And and I could, and I'm surrounding myself with people who are in my corner too, instead of chasing those who are not in my corner, which was my, you know, what I did before. You know, what's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of a lot of energy and yeah doesn't get you the results that you have now <clears throat> so would you say you feel safe in your home now oh yes 
I do. I feel safe. And I mean, when you have a hurricane or tornado blowing against you and you can still be grounded and settled, it's the most empowering thing. Yeah. It really is. That yes. blows my mind. So he, you can have your husband can be in a rage, it sounds like. Yeah. And you are with yourself. You're staying with Jessica. You are grounded. How do you yes. do that? Well, I I just pretty much I acknowledge the hurt and the pain. It's okay to do that, you know? And I just, you know, it's not like I'm internalizing it because it's not like I want to dwell on it, but it, I acknowledge it. And then I just listen and I watch and I'm just witnessing what's going on. And then I do a lot of self-care and just give myself time to process things. I give myself time to recharge and regroup and get back to the place where I have no resentment, where I have no um, unforgiveness in my heart, where my heart is right, where I'm ready to let tenderness back in um, and, and start that process of intimacy and connection, building it back up because um, it is, um, it's the most worthwhile thing that I could ever do is build up my husband and build up our family. And it is hard right now, but I'm telling you before the skills, it was impossible. It's hard now, but it's a lot. It's a 180 from what it was. And it's only going to get better. Um, I have no doubt about it. I mean, I, what I envision is we, we have our grandchildren and they love us. And we're rocking in porch swings together, walk, just enjoying each other's company, not even saying a word, just, you know, just watching the sunset. Um, I just, that, I just know that we're going to reach that. And, you know, my, my husband said uh, in December that it was time to relinquish my support group and ridiculously happy wives. It was my incubator. It was my IV hooked up to me, like, you know, for over a year. And, you know, it was before he even said that I said, <clears throat> I, I, I knew that God was preparing me for this. And, uh, he was, you know, my, my husband said, we just can't do it anymore. And I said, okay, I trust you. And uh, I started preparing and I thought, you know, oh, I'm going to have to have support in place once this is gone. But the the message, the heart message that I got from this is that my husband thinks we're good. That I don't need ridiculously happy wives anymore. It's and amazing. when we were in Florida, yeah, we were visiting family. Um, he told a, a person at church to relay a message to a pastor who had counseled us marriage counseling years ago i <laughs> thought we were goners <laughs> he said hey tell pastor so-and-so we're good oh. that's what he said we're good <laughs> and then um and so you know i started preparing and i said well i'm going to forge a support group at the library um i'm going to read the empowered wife and I invited friends and we've been meeting every Sunday afternoon. And it's been so good because it's not just for me, it's for them. And they keep coming because there's a need and they don't, they've never heard these things like, oh, a win? What's that? What's that? You know, they, they've never heard these things. Uh, they don't even know how to identify what a win is. If they're doing something right. <laughs> and it's just so fun. And um, and and so I start out with wins. We read a portion of your book and then we we talk about what we took away. It's really simple, but it's like I 
I am keeping in the skills. I'm keeping, I'm, I'm inspired by the women's stories about their wins. And I'm, and it just keeps me fueled up. And, you know, I've shared with my husband, I would love to be a Laura Doyle relationship coach one day. And, you know, at this point it's a no, but you know, maybe someday that'll change. And, um, I just know that there's so much work to be done to end world divorce. And, and, you know, I just know that that is something that because of you, because of the skills, because of the community, which I'm forever indebted to, that you prevented a, a divorce. You prevented a separation. You, d- you prevented my family from falling apart. <laughs> You, you helped. This is changing the course for my own children for generations to come. Because they have parents who will stick it through, not just surviving, but thriving. And, and they see it. They see us show love to one another. They see us support one another. And we have those times now. I mean, it's not all the time, you know, still I get the silent treatments, disagreements, but I know that we're going to get through and I have total faith going to get better. It's the most worthwhile work in the world. Wow, Jessica, (laughs) so inspiring. I'm so moved. I mean, I have to, I've got to give you, I absolutely have to give you. I insist on giving you my best wife award. Congratulations on fixing your whole family. It's, I hear it's not perfect. There's still, there's still more to come. Um, but I just love your vision of being those grandparents on the porch, just sitting there in silence, uh, watching the sunset, and that your whole family is benefiting from you really investing yourself in being loving, that this is the most worthwhile thing that you can think of. And um, I I am so inspired. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Laura. You're welcome. I, I want to get your, uh, your tip, your, what's your best uh, advice for somebody who, is where you were. She's she wants to call DHS or CPS and and report her husband's violence, and instead uh, she she wants to get where where you are, where she knows that her her marriage is uh, going to be safe. It's going to continue to get better. That it's that her husband loves her. That he is dedicated. Uh, but she can reflect to her nineteen year old son. No. Uh, you have a wonderful father. What What's your best tip for her to get where you are? I would say be in your corner. Surround yourself with people who are in your corner. Know that your suffering and pain and tears are precious. They are valuable. And no training goes to waste. It's training grounds, really. Pain and suffering and hardships and trials all the tears, all the journaling, all the cries for help, all has a purpose. And I wouldn't have found this community, this resource, unless I was asking and searching for it and putting it out there. I desired an answer. What am I doing wrong? Is there anything I could do? Is it my husband? Is it 100%, okay, 99.7% him? Or is it, you know, what is it? Wow. So really just having that desire, honoring that desire, putting it out there, praying. That's part of what brought you to the place that you're, you're in now. And, and, and what would you say to Jessica if you could go back in time? And tell her what you know now. I'm going to say, you know, hang on there because you're going to start operating at a whole new level 
You're not going to be operating out of fear any longer. Just hang in there. Just give her some encouragement, it sounds like. Yeah. You know, I always, for the life of me, since I was saved at the age of 15, wondered what the verse perfect love casts out all fear means. And now I know perfect love does cast out all fear. And I couldn't do it without uh, my resource, capital R, for he, he brought you into my life you know, and, and I, it's, it's almost like, this is it. This is it. This is what all of this was for. Just to be able to go full circle and say, my husband is just right for me. And he is just what I needed. And I'm, I'm happy. And I could be happy. I've never been happy until February of 2023, I was never happy. And now I can be happy all the time, even when things aren't going right over here or when there's like little tornadoes in my life and one big one over here, you know, I can still be happy. It's the most amazing thing, you know, and and I, I always wanted to be that Proverbs 31 woman, you know, that, um, blessed you know your your children shall rise and call you blessed your husband also and he praises you and it occurred to me that they're praising her for being blessed which means happy she's already happy it's not like she's going to be happy when she hears that from them no she's happy they're just calling it like they see it she is a happy woman they rise up, the children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. And it's like, oh, the years that the locusts have eaten, you know, it's like the Lord is really restoring what was stripped away, what I thought was stripped away, but it really wasn't. It was still there. I just didn't know how, how to see it. And, and it, it, it's like, I have the abundant life that I, you know, it's so abundant to be able to love and not fear anymore. It's so, it's so it's like everything is a feast now, even like being out in the sun, cleaning vomit off a mat with cool water spraying on me. And it just, it's, I, I, that's a, a moment of joy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, wow. like I, I find I am so happy. I am so happy. So, so being part of ridiculously happy wives, you know, it, it's like, I don't even need a guarantee on that. It, it happens. It happens. You know, <laughs> you definitely sound ridiculously happy, Jessica. And you, you sound, you definitely sound like a, a future coach. Kathy Murray was saying, Oh, this is a future coach. And uh, you sound like you just have so much wisdom and so much uh, encouragement. You, you've just provided so much encouragement today. And um, someone is listening who uh, was, was feeling hopeless before she heard you. And uh, I just couldn't be more grateful for for getting to be in your in your joy to have it splash on me today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. I really do. I'm just so thankful. I have I have what I need. I have everything I want. And I'm just very thankful. Thankful to you. Thank you. Thankful for all my sisters of fun and light. Thankful to the Lord who brought me to this place. Mm-hmm. Thank you. According to a study at Harvard, and this was horrifying to hear, if you know a couple who's getting divorced, you are 75% more likely to get divorced too. Woo! It matters who you listen to, which is why over 7,000 women like you who think that having a great marriage is important have joined our free Adored Wife group. 
The Adored Wife Group is a launch pad where you can meet our certified coaches and discover the best next steps for making your marriage last and thrive. It's 100% free to join. Just go to lauradoyle.org slash group right now. This is a private group and it's not for everybody, but if you are a wife or girlfriend who thinks that having a great marriage is important too, we'd all really like to meet you. So go to lauradoyle.org slash group right now to join us free. That's lauradoyle.org slash group. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. On next week's podcast, I'm talking about whether compliments are important in a relationship. Spoiler alert, they are. I'm going to share three ways that you can get more compliments. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is I was just wondering if it's too late in the day to have a caffeinated tea. And the answer is yes, it is. And look, I'm having one. 